Let's crack into a bit of a preview of round one, Annalie, because it all tips off. As we said, Wednesday night, it's the Lynx and the Boomers, the scene of that infamous game two. Mm -hmm. I still think I'm catching my breath from that game. It was... And, you know, I've been around the league 15 years. There's been people that's been, that have been around a lot longer than me reckon it was one of the best finals we've ever seen. Um, bit of context, Perth took the win over Melbourne in Melbourne in game one, headed to Perth for game two. Melbourne had a sensational nail-biting win over the Lynx, which sent it to game three back in Melbourne where the Boomers took out the championship. And the first team to ever lose game one and rebound in the three-game format series that, to win the championship. Really? I didn't know that. Coming in hot that. and early with the stats, Annalise. So we know that both teams have had a lot of personnel changes yep. over the offseason. So let's start with the Lynx. They are the home team. So Darcy Garvin, your teammate from yep. the Opals, has gone to Europe. Unfortunately, we don't have Marina Mabry and Jackie Young back, two of the best imports we have ever seen in this yeah, league. Yeah, they were unreal. And uh, Alex Tipitoni's having a baby. So exciting for her. So exciting for her. That's so great. So they bring in some... Uh, familiar faces. We talk about Amy Atwell, a WNBA mm-hmm. top draft pick this year. She started for the Spark. She's a yep. WA girl. Ryan Petrick's been trying to uh, net her signature for many years. Yep. Um, and we'll talk a bit about your WNBA experience a bit later, but that is a huge signing for Perth. Yeah. Oh my God, absolutely. Especially because the way Ryan likes to run his teams, um, it's very fast paced Everyone can shoot, everyone can dribble, everyone can attack. And she just fits right into that kind of piece of the puzzle um, that they lost in some of the players from last year. Um, So having her into the mix, being able to play an outside game, sucking people out of the key, leaving space for players like Scherfi and taking attention away from players like Chloe Bibby, Alex Sharp, Sammy Wickham, it's going to be such a dynamic Starting five. <laughs> so they are dynamic and that's what we've come to know from Ryan Patrick's team. Sammy mm-hmm. coming off a, a terrific World Cup tournament with yourself. Um, Sherfy, what a w- wonderful basketball story she's been this year, of course, winning a Commonwealth Games three-on-three mm-hmm. medal, um, which was just wonderful. And then, yeah, you bring Chloe Bibby in. You mentioned Alex Sharp. They are going to be good. So are the Boomers, but they've had their disruption. So we yeah. know that Chris Lucas is the a new coach taking over from Guy Malloy. Confirmation last week, Tess Madgen has had knee surgery and will miss the start to this season. Um, but they retain that that key core from the last few years. They bring back Tiffany Mitchell as an import. Mm-hmm. They've lost Ezzy Magvigor, but they've gained an opal in Christy Wallace. Yeah, they have. And teams like Melbourne, like they've lost some players, but they've also retained a lot of their core um, from previous years, there's a lot of returning players that have been there year after year after year. You know, your Rachel Brewsters, your Panina Davidsons. Um, and of course, Kayla is, you know, the new mum is going to yes. be there, her and Pearly Girl. Um, so there's, there's a lot of returning pieces. And I think that Chris being, having been in the league for such a long time, he's, I don't think he's going to have any problems just kind of moving some of those pieces around to obviously um, accommodate for some of the missing players. Mm. Uh, you know, Christy Wallace is phenomenal. She's just phenomenal. And what an amazing point guard person to have in the league running around and I want her on my team, not playing against her. No one her. wants to play against <laughs> I Wally. don't want to play against Wally. I want her on my team. So, I, you know, Melbourne, Melbourne do what Melbourne do. And I think that Chris is an amazing coach. He'll be able to kind of rally the troops, get them together. And they've got so many talents uh, and they run very deep into the bench. Um, I, I really... I'm sending all my love to Madge, speedy recovery. I'm I'm sure she'll come back better than ever, as she always does. Um, But, yeah, that's that's my take on the boomers. So Chris coached Kayla at Townsville with much success. Part of that group was Mia Murray, who is the only active player currently in the top 20 games played in the league, apart from someone else we're going to talk about uh, <laughs> shortly. But um, they've had great success as a trio at Townsville. Yeah. And she's a hell of a signing in terms of her experience. Um, we've seen her come off the bench 
I don't think she'll be coming off the bench to start no. the season, given no. um, the injuries at the Boomers. But um, it's terrific that Mia goes around again. Yes, absolutely. The the experience piece um, is something that is invaluable. That is not just like uh, making decisions in hard moments of the game. That's like culture within the team. They understand what a championship winning culture looks like. And so they can bring that in in areas that, uh, you know, the younger, less experienced players haven't really had the exposure to that stuff yet. Um, Mia Murray was one of my favourite players. (laughs) Uh, So (laughs) always playing against her is a bit of like... It's you know, exciting. It's Mia. Yeah. So I've actually never told her that. Um, she knows now, <laughs> avid listener, and hopefully will join us on the WNBL show during the season. <laughs> <laughs>